Live from Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, the latest on a shooting on the east side that left a VIA bus caught in the crossfire. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. The FDA and CDC are close to approving boosters for all adults. How early that means you can get your shot. Coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Yay, we're at 60 degrees. I finally got to grab my jacket. <laughs> Breezy and cooler again. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 18th. It feels like fall and it feels like November, and I guess uh, it will continue to do so for a little bit. Let's find out for sure. Mike Osterhage is standing by with your Thursday forecast. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, the front moved through right on schedule late last night, early this morning. I've been you know, there was no rain or anything, but then I was like, oh yeah, there's some damp spots on just here and there. A couple little uh, sprinkly showers that the th this thing touched off, but yes, it is definitely windy and it is much cooler. It's going to continue to drop down in the next couple of hours. We've already lost about five degrees uh, just in roughly the past hour, hour and a half, two hours or so. 54 right now, Bernie Stage, 52 Kerrville, 60 here in town, and the humidity, boy, that has dropped like a rock as expected in behind this front. It's also, as we were talking about, very breezy wind out of the north at uh, 15 20 miles per hour and then we've got wind gusts close to 30 and it is going to be very blustery throughout the rest of today and with those northerly winds that's going to continue to pull in some of that cooler air so i think we continue to <clears throat> excuse me drop down another say five six, deg six degrees this morning and then we'll only rebound to roughly the mid 60s later on today there's the few little showers that move through right along that front really didn't amount to too much of anything. Just a couple of damp spots on the roads, like I said. Mold, moderate, pigweed, ragweed are low. And I'm um, going for mid-50s here in town. So mid-40s and even maybe a little bit lower than that in portions of the hill country. And very breezy, mostly cloudy skies. And then later on today, we'll see a bit more sunshine. That's it, 64. So we'll still be on the above normal side this morning, although much more comfortable, but well below normal for the high temperature. And then it's going to get really cold tomorrow morning. Does that stick around through the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police say a VIA bus was caught in the crossfire of a shooting on the east side last night. That shooting happened just before 8 p.m. along Martin Luther King Drive near Stolnet Street. San Antonio police say people in two cars were shooting at each other on the road when at least two bullets hit the VIA bus. Police believe shrapnel injured one man aboard that bus. There were only two other people on board, including the driver. No one else was hurt. Investigators say one of the shooters was detained, and this morning officers are still looking for a second driver. The FDA expected to authorize COVID booster shots for people 18 and older as early as today. ABC's M. Wynn is following the story from Washington. And Pfizer this morning, the FDA on the cusp of authorizing Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccine boosters for all adults. I've been waiting for a long time to get a booster. Sources tell ABC News an FDA approval today would clear the way for final approval from the CDC on Friday. Across the country, at least a dozen states are already offering the shot to all adults. Officials citing the growing number of breakthrough cases and more evidence showing waning immunity after six months. I hope that the state actually opens up some of the large centers, which was wonderful and very easy. And um, I don't understand why they can't be doing something like that this time. The White House also encouraging parents to get their children vaccinated in time for the holidays. The administration saying around 2.6 million kids, almost 10% of those eligible, have gotten a shot. But in order to be fully immunized by Christmas, children should get their first shot by November 21st, this Sunday. We're so excited for this day. We could actually be free now as parents, you know, not uh, worry less. The urgency is growing as cases and hospitalizations climb across the nation. At least 27 states, mostly in the Northeast and Midwest, where the colder temperatures are setting in, have seen an uptick in daily cases in the last two weeks. Although the highest risk are those people who are unvaccinated, we are seeing an increase in emergency department visits among adults age 65 and older, which are now again higher than they are for younger age groups. If the approval timeline goes as expected, all adults might be able to get their boosters starting this weekend. M1 ABC News, Washington.
A new study suggests about 30% of healthcare workers in U.S. hospitals remain unvaccinated against COVID. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention at Johns Hopkins University looked at about 3.4 million healthcare workers in more than 2,000 hospitals. Researchers say the percentage of vaccinated workers should increase soon. That's because of a new federal requirement that says certain healthcare workers need to be fully vaccinated by January 4th. More than 10,000 workers at John Deere will soon be back on the job after a majority of union members voted to accept the company's final offer. The vote ends a five week long strike. The United Auto Workers says that 61% of its members at Deere voted in favor of an offer similar to one rejected earlier this month. This offer includes an immediate 10% raise an $8,500 signing bonus along with 5% periodic bumps in pay. John Deere will also restore a cost of living adjustment to help protect workers from increases in consumer prices. Taiwan has now deployed the most advanced version of the F-16 fighter jet in its Air Force. The self-ruled island is stepping up its defense capabilities in the face of continuing threats from China. Taiwan's president commissioned into service 64 upgraded F-16V fighter jets at an Air Force base. The upgrade project comes at a time when the island's status has become a major point of tension in the U.S.-China relationship. Beijing has been stepping up its threat by sending fighter jets into combat formations into Taiwan's buffer zone southwest of the island on a regular basis. And time now is 436 and about 60 degrees out there. Today's enhanced car batteries come with an S enhanced price as well. We'll tell you how much money, how you can save money, money rather. Also next, a look at a big matchup in high school football this week. Plus, the UTSA Roadrunners are facing their biggest challenge yet. And I think they are up to the task. All that's coming up in morning sports outside with live cam right now. Definitely grab a jacket and hold on to your hats. It's windy out there. All sorts of stuff blowing a clock across the roads. You're watching GMSA. Time for a look at morning sports. The Alamo Heights Mules are one of only three undefeated teams left in 12's top 12 as we head into the second round of the high school football playoffs. After finishing the regular season at 10-0, the Mules have now continued their undefeated streak to 11 with a 5A by district victory over Ed Couch Elsa. Now they must face McCallum out of Austin. Two teams meet at a neutral site this Friday night. Cougar Stadium up in New Braunfels. We don't look past the record we have. Um, we just keep it at zero and zero and uh, do the same thing we do every time. Every game we go into every week, we're 0 and 0 for this week. Uh, so that's what we're thinking this week. Who cares? We're 11 and 0. Um, every week is the same thing. We're zero and zero, and if we win this week, then we're one and zero for this week, and we go on to the next. Kickoff between Alamo Heights and Austin McCallum will be seven o'clock, New Braunfels Friday night, and KSAT 12 Sports will be there. Saturday showdown between number 15 ranked and undefeated UTSA against defending Conference USA champion the University of Alabama at Birmingham, the biggest football game in UTSA history. If the Roadrunners win at the Dome this Saturday afternoon, they will clinch the Conference USA West Division title for the first time in school history, and then it hosts the Conference USA Championship game on Friday, December 3rd. If they lose, they would need help to get into the conference championship game. They'd have to beat North Texas and Denton next week, and UAB would have to lose their UTEP uh, to use, lose to UTEP in their last game of the regular season. We can't really look into all that, you know, but you know it's going to be a great test for us. You know they're a great team. You know they won um, this division, you know, three years in a row. Um, so you know they're they're the big brothers to us, and uh, we'll go out there and uh, compete on Saturday. The intensity is always high because of, of a game week, but you know, this one has a little extra oomph. Um, you know, they're defending champs. They're, they're, they're the big dogs on the block, so you know we have to beat them to be great. Um, yeah, so just a little extra focus this week. It will also be senior day since it's the last home game of the regular season. Kickoff is at 2.30 p.m. The Valero Texas Open, the third oldest tournament on the PGA Tour and the sixth oldest in the world and longest held in this uh, once in one city rather is coming. Texas Open in 2022 will be its 100th anniversary and mark the occasion. Valero Texas Open officials held a celebration at Brackenridge Park yesterday where it originated in 1922. They unveiled this marker and hosted an interview with 1980 Texas Open champ Lee Trevino. This was a big tournament. It wasn't the it wasn't the first tournament I had won in Texas. I had won the Colonial twice before here. Uh, Hispanic community, uh, they they absolutely embraced me here. I have a lot of great friends here. 
Um, and I, I think I brought a little bit of happiness when I won to him. Good to see Mr. Trevino out there. Valero Texas Open set to run from March 31st to April 3rd. Should be nice. Time now 442 and about 59 degrees right now. Still ahead, we're going to tell you why car batteries are becoming more and more expensive and how you can save a little money. And new details on the mystery gripping the world of professional tennis. Hi, welcome back. It's 445. The head of the Women's Tennis Association is casting doubt on a statement that claims a Chinese tennis player has retracted her sexual assault allegation. ABC's Andrew Dimpert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the mystery gripping the world of tennis. Where is Peng Shui? The 35-year-old has not been seen in weeks following allegations she was sexually assaulted three years ago by a former Chinese vice premier who has not commented on the allegations. There are a lot of sensitive and censored topics in China. One of the most sensitive is any kind of, set of allegation against a top high-ranking Chinese Communist Party leader. And China Research Director Sarah Cook explains what signs from the email has her concerned. To me personally, it's the wording of the email that's so creepy because it's so close to so many other of these statements from people who were in detention and forced to make very, very similar statements under duress. And we'll have much more on this international mystery coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosar Abdi, ABC News, New York. If you've had to replace your car battery in the past few years, you've probably noticed that they cost more. 12 on your ties, Marilyn Morris looks at the reason for the price hikes and how you can save. Cars are just more complex these days. Even car batteries have gotten a high-tech upgrade. You probably grew up with a battery like this, a lead acid or flooded battery. But a lot of new cars now come with AGM, absorbed glass mat batteries. Some lead acid batteries have been enhanced with advanced materials and designs. But the other type of battery, AGMs, use a glass mat separator to allow the electrolyte solution to move between the thin battery plates. It makes them well suited to repeated draining and recharging. Why are car makers using new batteries? Simple, today's cars need more electrical power. As vehicle technology evolves, we need more and more electric power to operate features like stop-start technology, safety and convenience features, and outlets to charge all of our devices. These enhanced batteries also come with an enhanced price tag. AGMs can cost twice as much as a traditional battery, between two and $300. Big box stores can save you money and auto parts stores will often install. But it isn't necessary to buy the most expensive replacement battery. Consumer Reports tests show some lead acid batteries perform almost as well as AGMs for a lot less money. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. If you're just now waking up or tuning in, we are, have dropped now into the 50s. Yeah, it's getting a little chilly out there. Definitely grab the jacket. Yeah, it, and the front moved through right on schedule. It's going to be staying on the cool side today. Just a good fall day. And tomorrow morning, wait till you see that. So first of all, uh, this picture was from yesterday. There's a little fog around. Atlanta. We don't have any fog this morning because, boy, we've got some wind out there. But it's just really, really nice looking with the moon right there and the, uh, the flag. And don't forget, the uh, lunar eclipse is early, early tomorrow morning. Cloud cover, we'll talk about that. There may be a couple of clouds in the way. More on that in a moment. First of all, we do still have some clouds out there. And yeah, it looks like this camera may be shaking a little bit from that wind. 60 out there at the airport, 54 Bernie Stage, 52 in Kerrville. And all this cooler air will continue to pump down in here on these winds out of the north at roughly 10, 15, 20 miles per hour. And again, we've got some gusts approaching 30. We're going to be very blustery throughout the day today. It's going to stay on the windy side. And the dew point temperatures yesterday, of course, it was definitely on the humid side. Now, dew points have dropped down. 20, 25, 30 degrees or more compared to this time yesterday. So much drier air has come on in here. Dry air doesn't hold the heat in and it also heats up very quickly. But of course, with the influx of all the, the cooler air, it's not going to heat up that much today. And then uh, right now, cloud cover is keeping us from dropping down really, really quickly, although we will be dropping down, like I said, tomorrow. So we keep the dry air around here. 
throughout the day. Tomorrow morning, uh, the dry air continues to pump on in, and we won't have quite the cloud cover nor quite the wind. And again, so that's going to allow temperatures to really drop down. Still going to be great throughout the day, but then even by tomorrow evening, now not that it's going to be humid, but notice how the, the wind flow is now going to start to shift around tomorrow night. Humidity is going to come back in here fairly quickly over the weekend. So this little bit of uh, nice fallish weather is only kind of a, a two day occurrence today as well as tomorrow. It's still going to be cool uh, starting off on Saturday morning, but again, the humidity will come in fairly quickly then throughout the weekend. So today we're going to see a little bit of sunshine out there. Now tomorrow morning, and this is right around the time of the eclipse, it's about uh, between say one and four in the morning, there will be a couple of clouds hanging around here. So it's going to be kind of a, a hit or miss situation. It's not going to be completely clear skies. Again, that's going to be the case throughout much of the morning. Um, but hey, if you want to get up and see it, it's going to be a pretty nice sight if indeed we can have, but we do have enough breaks in the clouds. And then a beautiful evening tomorrow. Now, once we get into the weekend, like I said, more uh, moisture around here, more humidity, and that chance for a couple of uh, showers. All right, around the country, we've got big, big storm system way up there to the north of us. That's actually what is pulling this front on through here. And yeah, it's got some pretty darn cold air in behind us. We're obviously on the leading edge of that. So this will be, like I said, a very quick two day little batch of cold air that moves on in here. We warm back up, then we've got another front moving through right after that late Sunday. 60 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and so we'll drop down. We'll only rebound 60 at noon, 64 for a high temperature today. So we are going to be on the, the cool side of normal for once. And then tomorrow, 42 starting off. That's here in town, so you know it's going to be much colder in the hill country, 66 in the afternoon then, so nice warm up. Still chilly Saturday morning, but then we get up into the mid 70s and look at the low temperature Sunday. I mean, it only stays at 60, but then the next front moves through here, cools us down a couple of days, more humidity midweek, and it looks like another front and maybe some rain still by uh, Thanksgiving and Friday after that. So here we are a week away from Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. We still don't see a hard freeze on the map, which yeah. is probably a good thing. People are still buying plants to put out on the porch and everything mm -hmm. like that. Next week, that uh, that batch of cold air may be flirting with the freezing, especially in the hill country. Mm -hmm. And, and got to watch it even tomorrow morning, too. So All right. It will be chilly. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now we're at 452, about 59 degrees. And coming up next, Alanis Morissette is being featured in a new documentary that's debuting today. And we're back at Five Till. Details on an Alanis Morissette documentary plus a critically acclaimed series gets a second season. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Without even knowing I was doing it, I was carving out my voice. This is dream come true stuff. The Alanis Morissette documentary Jagged debuts today on HBO after the singer slammed it a few months back. The film looks at the making of her breakthrough album Jagged Little Pill, and Morissette discusses sexual abuse she says she experienced in the industry. But she has called the doc salacious. I definitely was. Um, surprised by her statement. Allison Clayman directed Jagged, telling me she spent months working with Morissette, going through her archives and interviewing her. I felt like this is a film that, you know, was made uh, so collaboratively and, um, you know, with such a spirit of of celebration and respect. Before the film's debut at the Toronto Film Festival, Morissette said in a statement, this was not the story she agreed to tell. I bless our new leader, Catherine the Great. After a long break, season two of the critically acclaimed series, The Great is almost here. And after wanting power for all of season one, Elle Fanning's Catherine the Great gets it in season two. But be careful what you wish for. She's someone who has a lot of ideas and she talks a lot about her amazing ideas. <laughs> but is she able to implement them um, in a country that is kind of not wanting to change? Season two of The Great is out tomorrow on Hulu. And Oscar-nominated Boys Don't Cry actress Chloe Sevigny is 47 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, about 59 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, two high-profile trials are gripping the nation. We're going to get an update on Kyle Rittenhouse's case and what the defense is saying in the trial regarding the shooting and killing of Ahmaud Arbery. And still ahead, breaking an iPhone could typically cost a lot of money. We'll tell you about Apple's new self-service repair program coming up in Tech Bytes. And ahead on GMSA at 6, the Astros are getting one of their star players back for another season. We're going to have the terms of the new deal. 
And checking Transguide right now. See how things are looking out there. Wow, bright sunshine at 410 in San Pedro. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's a frozen shot from looks like yesterday. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Crime Stoppers of San Antonio need your help in locating a suspect involved in a murder. Details coming up next. Plus, we are checking on two high-profile shooting trials, both of which are predicated on the argument of self-defense. And outside with live cam, you can hear it on uh, Jonathan's microphone in that shot. The wind is blowing, the front has moved through, and now the cooler air is filtering in. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday. It is November 18th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Yes, you could you could hear it already. The cool front coming in on Jonathan's microphone. That's pretty cool. That's happening. Yeah, so you saw he's wearing a jacket as well. Yes, very prepared at 59 degrees right now. Mike says it could be even colder by tomorrow morning. Oh yeah, it's going to be a whole lot colder by tomorrow morning. So the front has just moved on through that cooler air is going to continue to to push on in here. We've already dropped down since I got into work a couple of hours ago. Uh, we've dropped down about five, six degrees out here at the airport. And yes, it is very blustery and it's going to remain like that throughout the day. So 59 northerly wind at 22 miles per hour and then gusting on top of that. We've had already seen some wind gusts about 30 miles per hour and they'll be even stronger uh, throughout the course of the day. Look at that bottom number dew point that was up in the upper 60s, mid upper 60s yesterday. So it has almost been cut in half with the dryer that's moved on in here. So we'll drop down and then that's it. 64 for high temperature today, which is about oh, roughly five, six degrees below the normal average temperature this time of year. The aquifer dropped down half a foot yesterday and the allergens, moderate mold, ragweed, excuse me, pigweed and grass are both on the, uh, the low side. All right, as far as wind out there, boy, it is breezy. Hang on to your hat. Like I said, 22 mile per hour winds out there at the airport, 18 Port SA and 22 in Hondo. Then the gusts on top of that, 31 at Hondo, 26 mile per hour wind gusts in Bulverde and again, approaching 30 miles per hour here in town. Now, as far as rain, yeah, a couple of showers did get squeezed out. Uh, they saw like one or two damp spots on the roads. That was about it. Very patchy in nature as expected. Not a big rain event, unfortunately, and everything is pretty much out of the area. So cloudy, breezy, cooler, and then throughout the day, partly cloudy, windy, and it is going to be chilly with those mid 60s. And if the clouds really don't clear out too much in your area, it's going to make it feel even cooler. Then with the wind settling down, we'll have mostly clear skies overnight and that cooler air continues to move on in here. It's going to be a very cold start. We're looking at mid, or excuse me, low 40s here in town tomorrow. So rivaling for some of the coldest temperatures so far this season and just a beautiful day. Great for football tomorrow night. It's going to change very quickly. This is only going to be like a two day really fall taste of or fall event, if you will. And humidity is going to start to come back in here fairly quickly over the weekend. It's going to be milder, but then another front comes through late in the weekend. Details on that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, good morning, Mr. Cavazos. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, it may not be sunny and beautiful on these trans guide shots just yet, but the roads aren't looking too bad. Let's take a look right now, see how things are shaping up. 281 at Hildebrand does show pretty smooth and empty uh, roadways that we're spotting here, and that seems to be the trending thing that we're seeing at this hour. So not looking too bad as we're getting this Thursday morning started. Let's go ahead and take you to the map. Uh, we did have a crash off Loop 410 northbound at Exchange Parkway that does look like it has since cleared out. So some good news and taking you a little bit further up towards the Dominion right here at I-10 westbound at Seaple Park. We did have another crash that was reported a little bit earlier, but again, these crashes do look like they've cleared out. Taking a wider look at the map, it is looking great as we are getting this new morning started. So if you plan on heading out the door in the next few moments, make sure that you enjoy a cup of coffee, maybe a hot tea if you fancy. But let's go ahead and bring you to those inbound times because we are seeing that same green across the board here if you're traveling to the San Antonio area, maybe in the next few minutes. Right now, 25 minutes from I-10 and Bernie, 26 minutes coming in from 281 and Bolverde, and 26 coming in from 35. Now, 35, there are some construction crews still out there. We're going to get to that coming up in the next few minutes here on GMSA. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Now to late breaking news. Gunshots in an east side neighborhood have sent a man to the hospital. The shooting on West Drexel near Hackberry also left one street peppered with bullets. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, what can you tell us? 
Well, this is a developing story, so we have uh, very few details at this point, but police did confirm that at least one person was hit by the gunfire. It looks like it happened right here in the middle of West Drexel, the 100 block. Uh, police did have some evidence markers down uh, just right where that second piece of crime scene tape, I don't know if you can see it here on TV, but uh, there were several showcasings or several several markers down in the middle of the street. I did talk to one neighbor briefly. He told me his mother was nearly hit by the gunfire, uh, that she called 911 right around 3.30 this morning. Uh, it was a different person who was hit, that person taken to a hospital, and police say he was stable as he was taken away. We don't know the circumstances surrounding the shooting, but police did tell us that some homes and cars here in the 100 block of West Drexel also were hit by gunfire. And again, we are waiting to talk to them and get some more information because they're still investigating right now and this all is still unfolding. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, San Antonio police say a woman is dead after she was hit by a car. It happened at Enrique M. Barrera Parkway and Southwest 34th Street around 7 p.m. last night. Police say the woman was walking across that street when she was hit by someone driving a car. Officers tell us that EMS provided life-saving measures for several minutes, but she was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver of the car stopped to help. Investigators say no criminal charges are expected at this time. This morning, San Antonio police are trying to track down a suspect involved in an assault that left one man dead. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with more details on this Crime Stoppers case. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. Police need help locating a suspect wanted in connection to the murder of the man police have identified as Jeff Freeman. This is what we know. Freeman was murdered on the 900 block of Fredericksburg Road. That's north of downtown near I-10 on October 21st, 2011, in plain daylight shortly after 11 a.m. that morning. Police say they arrived to EMS treating Freeman, who appeared to be a victim of assault and was quickly taken to an area hospital. Now, Freeman later died from what police say were blunt force injuries. His death was ruled a homicide. Now, if you have any information that can lead to an arrest, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Information you provide could make you eligible for a $5,000 cash reward. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jury deliberations resume this morning in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, and there's a new controversy. His lawyers claim the prosecution withheld evidence by obscuring a crucial piece of video. They're now demanding a mistrial. Meanwhile, in Georgia, at the trial of three men accused of killing Ahmad Arbery, one of the defendants took the stand. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a closer look at both trials. This morning, two high-profile trials gripping America, both of them racially charged, hinging on video and predicated on the argument of self-defense. Tell truth or nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. On Wednesday in Georgia, Travis McMichael surprised jurors by taking the stand in his own defense, speaking publicly for the first time about shooting and killing Ahmaud Arbery last year. I was thinking of my son. It sounds weird, but that was the first, this, this, this first thing that hit me. Video shows McMichael shooting Arbery after what McMichael, his father, and a neighbor claim was a citizen's arrest under then-Georgia law. McMichael and his father are seen waiting for Arbery when Arbery, who was unarmed, approaches a truck. There's a struggle between Arbery and McMichael before Arbery is shot. What did you do? I shot. Why? He, he had my gun. He, he struck me. This is a life or death situation. Before the shooting, Arbery is seen wandering through a construction site. He's not seen taking anything. McMichael argues he was lawfully trying to stop burglaries in the neighborhood at the time. But prosecutors pointed out McMichael didn't chase any white people seen at the same construction site. Now, when you got inside the truck, you had your phone with you. Yeah, yes, I had my phone. And you didn't call 911 at that point. I did not. In Kenosha, Wisconsin, today is day three of jury deliberations in the Kyle Rittenhouse trial. On Wednesday, the jury privately rewatched drone video from the night Rittenhouse shot three people, killing two of them. But now defense attorneys have filed a motion for mistrial, partially because they say prosecutors provided them with a lower quality version of that video. If it was emailed, it was compressed. Rittenhouse claims he was in Kenosha at the time to protect property as protests broke out after the police shooting of Jacob Blake. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. 509, 59 degrees.
And still ahead, we're gonna tell you about Apple's new self-service repair program that's meant to save you some money. What if you got pulled over and got a turkey instead of a ticket? That's what's just happened over in Castle Hills, we'll explain. That's a better experience to have, I imagine. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam, we're at 59 degrees. It's getting chilly out there. We'll be right back. Love the gobbles. Welcome back, everybody. It's 513. Safe drivers out in Castle Hills were surprised by police officers that were and they were given Thanksgiving turkeys instead of tickets. The so drivers following the law using their turn signals and obeying posted speeds were given the Thanksgiving birds yesterday. Look at that lady. Did you see her? I know, her face. That was funny. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Castle Hills Mayor uh, J.R. Trevino came up with the idea and partnered with a local business to purchase the turkeys. It was all in the spirit of spreading joy this holiday season. This time of the year, Everybody has something going on. We're rec recovering from COVID, the weather, weather storm, and this is an opportunity for us to do something for the community. So it was the first year for the turkey instead of a ticket handout. The mayor and the police department called it a gobbling success. Now, do they offer counseling for the panic attack that it's from seeing those? <laughs> yeah, some of those poor drivers. Because I'm like, assuming they pull you over with their lights and then they walk up and they go, here's your turkey. Mm, I have to ask. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it's a little a, bit. It's a great program yeah. in the spirit of the season and, of course, of giving. 514, about 59 degrees. A popular music service introducing some new subscription plans. Plus, how Xbox is making it easier to play your favorite games on devices you already have. I've lost count of how many asthma attacks I've had, but my new normal with Nucala, fewer asthma attacks. Nucala is a once monthly add-on injection for severe eosinophilic asthma, not for sudden breathing problems. Allergic reactions can occur. Get help right away for swelling of face, mouth, tongue, or trouble breathing. Infections that can cause shingles have occurred. Don't stop steroids unless told by your doctor. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection. May cause headache, injection site reactions, back pain, and fatigue. Ask your doctor about Nucala. Find your new normal with Nucala. Most bladder leak pads were similar, until Always Discreet invented a pad that protects differently with two rapid dry layers for strong protection that's always discreet. Question your protection. Try Always Discreet. I brought in Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh. Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and nutrients to support immune health. In today's Tech Bites, big news for people who have an iPhone or Mac. Do-it-yourself repairs will soon be possible. Apple says it will begin selling parts and tools to make the most common repairs to newer iPhones and Mac computers. The company has long resisted calls to allow customers to fix their own devices. Tidal is offering free streaming for the first time. You can now have access to the entire music catalog at no cost if you're willing to sit through ads and live without top quality sound. Tidal's standard $9.99 plan now includes high-res audio, and there's now a $19.99 plan with premium features. Finally, Xbox Cloud Gaming will soon be available on some consoles. Microsoft is rolling out the new feature, allowing users to try games by streaming before actually downloading them. It will require users to have a Game Pass subscription. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. It's 518. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavasso. So it looks like things were okay on the roadways. Yeah, they've been pretty uh, okay so far. We're keeping our fingers crossed here. I was checking some of these TransGuide cameras. Looks like they're shaking a little bit. So I'm sure Mike will let us know why that is and coming up in a minute. But right now the roads have been pretty much empty throughout the morning. That's not a bad thing if you're going to be getting your morning started early with us. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you what we're looking at right now. We talked about some road work that was going on up toward New Braunfels on 35. Uh, saw a little bit of a stretch of orange there in those southbound lanes. Looks like we are seeing some progress. It's right at FM 306. There are some construction crews that were out there working to improve the roadways. It looks like they should be wrapping up, but the whole project should be wrapping up by tomorrow. So keep that in mind for your drive coming into perhaps San Antonio later tomorrow morning. Find those alternative routes or make sure that you get out uh, with enough time on the roadways. Let's take you down here though, east of I-37. I uh, just checked the San Antonio fire page. Looks like a vehicle fire was reported there. A few units out there right now. This is off Glasgow. 
Buffalo Drive right east of I-37. Not seen a buildup, and this is not impacting any of the highways. But of course, we're going to continue to watch that throughout the morning. Wider look at the map does show that it is still pretty much green across the board. We're not seeing any issues right now that would impact that morning drive time. Let's just take one last look around town. 281 at Grayson, pretty empty there. And look, the camera was shaking just a bit right there, guys. Yes, windy. it is. Just a little bit. We are expecting that. Yeah, it's very windy out there, and wind's been gusting about 30 miles per hour, and it's going to be that way all day long. So, hey, last night, were you out when that moon was coming up? Yes. <laughs> oh, that was absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. We were out there at the uh, Lightscape at the Botanical Gardens, and we're going to show you more on that coming up in about uh, half an hour or so. Beautiful. That is do yourself a favor so this year anyway beautiful moon and of course it is full later on tonight and technically tomorrow and there is the lunar eclipse tomorrow big question is are we going to have cloud cover hope good thing it's not tonight because or this morning because uh, we got a lot of clouds out there and you can see this camera shaking as well from those winds all right radar as the front moved on through it did touch off a couple little sprinkly showers and there's a few more down to the south as a matter of fact even a couple of uh, as the front runs into some of this moisture even a couple of thunderstorms down there and uh, oh, just the south of tilden katula and right around beville and this will all continue to stay down to the south and sort of slide down to the south and maybe even a leftover little uh, now well, a couple of little sprinkles here and there, but uh, otherwise we've just got windy conditions. 22 mile per hour winds out there at the airport. Same thing, Hondo 18 Port SA, and again the gusts on top of it. 29 at the airport and 31 mile per hour wind gusts right now at Hondo. And uh, as far as the humidity, it has dropped like a rock compared to yesterday. That's going to be the case today and tomorrow. Shoots back up, almost looks like the uh, Greek letter Omega. Shoots back up over the weekend very quickly, and then another front comes down through here late Sunday and so that's really going to drop it off. So definitely a roller coaster as far as the humidity and as far as the uh, temperatures are concerned. OK, today we have a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning. I think we see some sunshine mixed in later on today. Now tomorrow morning, and this is about the time the eclipse starts. This computer model is a little more encouraging as far as uh, the lack of clouds, clear skies, I should say, right at the heart of the eclipse, which is about three o'clock tomorrow morning. It's going to be kind of a, a real, real fine line, I guess you could say, as far as uh, any clouds hanging around here tomorrow morning for that eclipse. All right, jumping into the future as we go in through uh, the, later on today, tomorrow, the weekend looks pretty good, but the clouds are going to start to work their way back in here, especially Sunday. A couple of showers are going to be possible later on Sunday as the next front moves on through. We should clear out fairly nicely for Monday. It's going to cloud right back up again very quickly, so we continue this roller coaster and a couple of showers maybe late Wednesday looks like right now a better chance for some rain than on Thanksgiving as well as Friday still a week away a lot can change but that's uh, been kind of the trend for the past couple of days 60 at noon today mostly cloudy skies I think we see a little bit more sunshine later on mixed in still very breezy partly cloudy 64 that's it tomorrow morning we get down to 42 so rivaling some of the coolest temperatures we've seen so far this season 49 Saturday morning but then right back up into the 70s mid and uh, in some areas even upper 70s more humidity especially Sunday than the next front moves through are we looking for Turkey Day a week from today? Well, uh, as mentioned, a couple of showers are possible. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's still a week away, but that, like I said, has been the trend for uh, Thanksgiving to have a couple of showers around here, maybe lingering into Friday early of next week. Okay, so okay. leftover turkey sandwiches inside. Yeah, possibly. And the turkey inside. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Okay, uh, 523, about 58 degrees. And still ahead in your morning spotlight, why Palm Springs Phil Fest is getting ready to honor power director Jane Campion. A big award for a Hollywood director plus a Star Trek actor gets more recognition. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. A man was made by patience and the odds against him. For what kind of man would I be if I did not help my mother? Jane Campion is a favorite for a Best Director Oscar nomination this year for The Power of the Dog, and she's already sure of one honor. Campion is set to receive the Director of the Year Award at the Palm Springs International Film Festival in January. Campion was nominated for the Best Director Oscar in 1994 and won the original screenplay Oscar for The Piano. I'm they, not, not she. 
I've never felt like a she or or a her. Non-binary actor Blue Del Barrio is having quite a time, rising from recurring to regular character on Star Trek Discovery and seeing fans dress as their character. It's so like crazy from going for, like from being young and being like, I want to see myself on TV and then being like, people are cosplaying and they look like me. <laughs> It's to, to, like having it backwards is really bizarre. In Hollywood, but. I'm David Daniel. <laughs> Dealing with fame. That's cute. Time now, 527 and 59 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. New information this morning on the legal battle against the federal government's vaccine mandate. Plus, how the U.S. military is trying to help families dealing with housing and financial problems. Plus, we'll tell you how to get one of Starbucks' famous reusable cups for free today. And yes, there is a catch. <laughs> and oftentimes, many smokers decide they want to quit after many years of using cigarettes. But does giving them up actually help? We're going to have the answer ahead on GMSA at 6. Making headlines this morning as many states expand access to COVID boosters, the legal battle against the federal government's vaccine mandate heats up again. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're at 58 degrees and it's a little windy out there. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, the 18th early. We were watching one of our reporters, Jonathan Cotto, out in the field. He had a vest on and mm -hmm. then he added another layer about 10, 15 minutes later. Yeah, it's changing pretty quickly out there. Let's go ahead and check in with Mike. Yeah, that wind is definitely going to uh, add a little bit of a chill to these temperatures and it is going to be breezy all day long. Winds have already been gusting about 30 miles per hour. Right now we are at 59, so we've dropped down just since this front has moved through a good six, seven degrees at least. And that number has dropped like a rock. The dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. Yesterday it was well up in it was about 30 degrees higher than what it is right now. So we had a lot of humidity and now dry air. But look at those winds. That's the sustained winds. 22 miles per hour out there at the airport, 18 Port SA, 24 now at Hondo, and then the gusts right around 30 or so, and we're going to be gusting 30, 35 throughout the rest of today. The front did squeeze out as expected, a couple of light little showers. Now it's sort of running into a lot more of this moisture down here to the south. And we do have a couple of thunderstorms well down there, uh, well south of Three Rivers, and those will be staying down to the south. And then uh, we've got a couple of maybe a leftover little sprinkly shower or two hanging around here, but most all of that is continuing to move on out. Molds on the moderate side, pigweed, ragweed are both low. Of course, the update account is going to be coming out in about, uh, say, a couple hours or so. 60 at noon, so we continue to drop down into mid-50s and then slowly rebound throughout the day, and we'll only make it back up to 64 later on this afternoon. And again, it is going to be very windy, much, much colder tomorrow morning. And then will this nice fall weather last in through the weekend? Details on that coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? Anything big out there? Not yet, Mike. I think we got a few droplets right here from this trans guide camera loop 410 at Gulebita Road, uh, but taking a closer look, we see that we got a little bit of a busier commute in this area. Just make sure that you're taking it easy out there. The morning has been quiet so far. Let's go ahead and take a quick look around town, see how things are shaping up for 530 I10 at the Y. If you were with us yesterday, you remember that was a big problem spot due to a crash. Looks like things are clear right now. US 90 and Ogolitos. A few more folks out there this morning getting their morning started early with us. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map because Again, it's the same situation we've been seeing in the last half hour. Lots of green on the screen, and you know we're not complaining about that as we're getting a new day started. Let's take a look at those inbound times. The same trend continues here. Green across the board coming in from I-10 and Seguin. It's 29 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area at this hour. 23 from 87 and Lavernia, and 28 minutes coming in from Floresville. So lots of reasons to smile this morning. We're going to continue to track all the commutes uh, as the morning does pick up. We'll give you all the updates coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, sir. Updating late breaking news. It's not even sunrise yet, but one uh, people in one east side neighborhood have been up for hours. They were awakened by the sounds of gunshots in the 100 block of West Drexel. At least one shot hit a man sending him to a hospital. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, is there any update on that man? Based on what police told us, it doesn't sound like it was a life-threatening wound. They said he was stable as he was taken to a hospital. It looks like he was shot right here in the middle of the street in the 100 block of West Drexel. This is right near Hackberry. You can see police are now taking down uh, the crime scene tape. They're wrapping up their investigation here at the scene. But that shooter is still out there as far as we know. That person, according to police, uh, shot the man and then got away in a car. 
We were not given a description of the vehicle. We also do know that at least one shot hit a home here in the 100 block of West Drexel and uh, at least one car hit by that gunfire. No one inside the home was hurt. Uh, police still continue their investigation to try to figure out who's responsible for this. But for now, that shooter's still on the loose. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Dozens of cases pushing back against one of the federal government's vaccine mandates are now in the hands of one court. CNN's Brett Conway has everything you need to know. The COVID-19 vaccination push continues, and there was a 47% boost in first vaccinations over last week, more than double what it was a month ago, partly because younger kids are now eligible. And boosters have gotten their own boost. More than 31 million fully vaccinated adults have gotten a booster. That's about one in six. More than half of them are people 65 and up. But Wednesday, Moderna said it filed for emergency use authorization with the FDA for its booster for all adults. And Pfizer has submitted for EUA for its booster too. The FDA could make a decision on Pfizer's authorization any day, while the CDC's advisors are set to meet Friday to talk about it. But some states don't want to wait. At least 11 states expanded booster eligibility ahead of the federal green light. Some of the same states pushing back against the federal government's vaccine mandate aimed at companies with more than 100 employees. 34 challenges were filed nationwide, some against, others looking for a more stringent mandate. They'll be consolidated and, after a lottery, decided by the conservative-leaning Ohio-based 6th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. The fate of President Joe Biden's most controversial push to date to get Americans vaccinated, now out of his hands. I'm Britt Conway reporting. This morning, President Biden is calling for an investigation into oil and gas companies as he searches for ways to lower gas prices. Biden has ordered the Federal Trade Commission look into whether illegal conduct is pushing up prices at the pump. He did not cite any specific evidence of wrongdoing in his letter to the FTC, but he says prices remain high even though oil and gas companies' costs are declining. Meanwhile, the U.S. oil industry is slamming Biden's call for an investigation. Oil companies say prices are surging because of increased demand. The American Petroleum Institute says government, the government should focus on increasing domestic oil and gas production. The U.S. military is giving service members a helping hand this holiday season with inflation increasing the prices of essential goods. The Department of Defense is introducing measures to help cash-strapped families. They are temporarily increasing the housing allowance in high-priced areas. They're also expanding the lodging reimbursement where there are housing shortages. It's not clear how long these measures will be in place. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is giving Pentagon officials 90 days to create a strategy to address feud food insecurity. According to Feed America, 125,000 active duty service members have trouble putting food on the table. Right now, 537 and the temperature is now down to 58 degrees. Still ahead, why some brand new clothing at TJ Maxx may cost a little more than usual this holiday season. And up next, our local organization is trying to reach troubled teens struggling with mental health problems. Taking a look outside with live cam, a little breezy out there. We're at 58 degrees. Go ahead and grab that jacket today. We'll be right back. 540, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says that for teen girls in 2020, ER visits for suicide attempts rose by 51% from just the year before. And as Ursula Perry reports, now there's a program here in San Antonio that can lend some assistance. This isolation led me to attempting suicide when I was in middle school. Watched my stepfather slowly lose his job. These audio clips, troubled teens talking to troubled teens, speak louder than any counselor or therapist. They're part of Project Yes, a localized version of a national effort to reach pandemic-battered teenagers right where they live. With the first 200 youth that have taken this program here in San Antonio, we've seen a 62% decrease in hopelessness a 55% decrease in self-hate, and a 64% improvement in perceived control. Huge and hopeful, she says, because the load of mental health concerns that physicians are seeing in teens today is unprecedented. The amount of anxiety and depression that I am seeing in my office right now is astronomical. And I feel so much, not only for those youth, but for those parents, those caregivers, 
that don't know what to do. The website is free. It's totally anonymous, and each activity or module only takes a half hour. But the impact could be life-changing and life-saving. Project Yes has a goal of reaching 3,000 teenagers by the end of the year with free mental health help. The website is anonymous, it's free, and it's open to anyone, parents or children, anyone who can click on the link or the QR code. As Dr. Plastino says, couldn't hurt to give it a try. More information is on KSAT.com. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. And time now is 542 and it's 58 degrees. Up next, Aww. oh look at this little cutie, ready for a cuddle. We're checking in with Kim over at San Antonio Humane Society. Okay, that little face is just adorable. And the pink outfit, too, I think just adds yeah, to it. Kim's yes. here from the San Antonio <laughs> Humane Society. Who's that little girl? Well, good morning. We have Sweet Bumble. Uh, Bumble is a shepherd mix. She's about four months old, almost six pounds. Um, but yeah, she's definitely gonna get a lot bigger than us. Yeah, she's got some fairly decent sized paws. I yes. love named after Bumble from Bumble. Uh, from Rudolph. So, <laughs> yes. oh, you're just as cute as can be, sweetie. Yes, yes. and that, that completely black face that she has yes. and those big old eyes. Definitely good distinction marks. Yeah. Um, but somebody that's gonna wanna play outside, so definitely gonna wanna run, uh, lots of toys. Yeah. Tennis ball in the backyard with yes. the kids. Everybody's going to be yes. sleeping. So, Everybody. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> what you got going on? <laughs> so we have a great promotion coming up with our sweet, adorable, lovable pit bulls. Um, they're going to be uh, half off the, the fee, and we'll be running that the 15th through the 19th. So come on out and see us. All right. Well, if you'd like more information about that and sweet little Bumble, head on over to the San Antonio Humane Society, <laughs> 4804 <laughs> Fredericksburg Road, 226-7461. Thank you, dear. Thank you. How cute. In your morning consumer headlines, bargain shoppers may not be able to land as many deals on those designer brands at TJ Maxx. The CEO of TJ Maxx company says they have a strategy to raise prices on select items and it's work working effectively. The price increase is a result of a few pandemic related factors, a global supply chain crisis, delays at ports and high demand. The company has also given employees a pay increase. Inventory for luxury goods is also low. However, TJ Maxx says it has plenty of product for the holidays. Disney Cruise Lines will now require all guests five and up to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. That applies to sailings beginning on or after January 13th of next year. Guests who are not eligible due to age must show proof of a negative COVID test. Earlier this month, the CDC endorsed a recommendation to vaccinate children ages 5 to 11. Starbucks red season continues with free limited edition reusable cups. Today, the coffee chain is giving out the limited edition red cups while supplies last. Customers just have to order a holiday or fall drink. In a nod to Starbucks 50th anniversary, the cup is made with 50% recycled material. This is the fourth annual red cup day giveaway. Starbucks also always gives a 10 cent discount to customers who bring in their own reusable cup. Those cups are going to go fast yeah, today. They look they look nice and festive for the holiday season. 547. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Are you feeling festive yet? I wish I could say that, uh -oh. Mark and Steph. Unfortunately, we have an issue out here of US 90 at 410 that is not going to have people feeling very festive this morning. You can see that traffic is building in that area. Now, the San Antonio fire page has reported this as a crash. We have not been able to pinpoint the exact location. Keep in mind, this is a very shaky shot from US 90 at 410. Our friends at Transguide working to give us a clear clear picture is exactly what's going on. But again, keep in mind, this is obviously already causing some issues for that morning commute. Let's go ahead and take you to the map to see how that is looking right now in those lanes. And now again, it has not been pinpointed exactly where that crash has been detected, but we are seeing a buildup there along Loop 410 South. And we know that it's around US 90 or Ray Ellison. So hopefully as the morning does pick up, we can pinpoint exactly where that crash is. But as you saw from Transguide, it does look like it's already causing a mess of problems as we're inching closer to 6 a.m. Let's take you up over over here, though, we do have some bridge widening construction. Just wanted to get to this again. Keep in mind, this should be wrapping up on November 30th. It's out towards 1604. Uh, the alternating full closure of the turnarounds at Kyle Seal Parkway in both directions should be wrapping up again November 30th, but this will be happening later today, 9 in the morning to 3 in the afternoon. You'll be seeing a buildup out there in 1604 as you're getting the day started. Wider look at the map does show we're not seeing huge congestions building up due to this crash on 410. We're going to continue to watch it closely and, of course, see how that does impact that morning drive. Guys. 
Thank you, Stephen. Wow. Look at the camera shaking. Yeah, it's shaking. Yeah, because I mean, we're already seeing wind gusts about 30 miles per hour out there. Oh, yeah. so, and it's going to be that way all day long. So one thing we're not going to see this morning, but this is just a really cool picture is some of that uh, low ground fog out there. But what a neat picture. I love that. The orangish glow on the uh, the rolls out there and a little bit of ground fog. Now this morning it is cloudy, but even this camera is shaking because of those winds that are really gusting. So both hands on the wheel, especially if you're driving a truck or something like that. All right, the front moved on through and it did squeeze out a couple of showers. Obviously there's a lot more down there to the south and even a few leftovers are sort of overrunning the front a little bit, sliding up to the north. And this is not really amounting to anything. Just don't be surprised if there's a couple of sprinkles out there basically, but then down to the south we do have a few more showers and even a couple of uh, thunderstorms, uh, lightning strikes here, and this is all going to continue to to kind of drift on south, but that's the front pushing its way on south and running into more humid air down there. Uh, like we were talking about, it is windy, 24 mile per hour winds at Hondo, 22 at the airport, 18 Port SA, and then those gusts, 31 Hondo, 29 right now at San Antonio International, 20 at Pleasanton, and just hang on to your hat all day long because it is going to continue need to stay very windy. So once again, going back 12 hours, there's the front moving on through and it's, it's kind of like I said, run into more humidity down there to the south and those few little leftover sprinkles uh, somewhat behind the front and then further on behind the front. We've got a lot of clear skies, but also a lot of cold temperatures, obviously snow up to the north, and this is all really being driven by this huge low up there in Canada. That's pulling in all this really cold air and that's what we're seeing the 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 front line of or I should say the leading edge of that. Now, as far as the rest of today, there's some of the leftover showers down there to the south. We will see some more uh, clearing later on this afternoon. Some sunshine mixed in with the clouds. Now tomorrow morning, this computer model does have a few clouds off to the west, more clearing off to the east. Of course, the lunar eclipse is going to be taking place basically between one and four in the morning tomorrow and most of us, I think, are going to have clear enough skies to see it, but there will be a couple of clouds, so it's not going to be like we'll have completely clear skies, unfortunately, for that. A lot more clearing, though, throughout the day tomorrow. Clouds going to be uh, returning very quickly Saturday along with the humidity returning. A couple of showers on Sunday as the next front moves on through. Then we clear out Monday, Tuesday. We'll start to see more clouds come in here. Chance of rain maybe late Wednesday and then on Thanksgiving. Right now it looks like we are going to have a couple of showers hanging around here and uh, perhaps into Thursday night as well as Friday. And the reason for that, we are going to be getting into more of a sort of tranquil air pattern. Look at that straight west to east across the area over the weekend. The first or the next run, I should say, comes through on Sunday and that'll cool us off. And then that low, which it kind of falls apart, but there's a big trough out here to the west of us, and that is going to start to really influence, pull a lot more moisture in here, and that's going to move across that trough will late in the week, and that's what's going to be giving us the rain chances then late next week. So 60 today at noon, mostly cloudy skies, and then high temperature, we're going to make it up to only 64. So we're starting off, we're still actually 10 degrees above normal right now. We'll continue to drop down a few more degrees, but then stay about five, six, seven degrees below normal later on this afternoon. Then and cold stuff really moves on in here. We're not going to have the breeze. We're not going to have the solid cloud cover tomorrow morning. So we're going to be getting down to 42 up to 66 then in the afternoon. Cold Saturday morning, but the humidity comes in here pretty quickly over the weekend. Another front late Sunday. Clear quickly Monday, Tuesday, and then more rain chances by the end of next week. Oh, so almost a couple of hot chocolate mornings in there, Mike. Oh, yes. definitely. Yeah, and grilled cheese and soup I think is a good menu item today. Or lunch or dinner. Yeah, we look forward to it. Or both. Sure. 553, about 58 <laughs> degrees. And coming up next, a first look at the Lightscape exhibit at the San Antonio Botanical Garden, which opens tomorrow. And your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, two, five, five, Fireball seven. Daily four numbers, four, two, six, seven, Fireball zero. Cash five, four, eight, 24, 29, 31. Lotto Texas, four, eight, 14, 18, 34, 44. And your Powerball numbers, 3, 16, 48, 52, 60, Powerball 1, Power Play 3. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA and ABC News exclusive, Vice President Kamala Harris, one-on-one -on -one with George, on what the Biden administration is doing about inflation, pushing the president's economic agenda, and her role in the administration. You'll see that and so much more coming up right here on GMA.
All right, take a look at your screen, folks. Take a look at the uh, San Antonio Botanical Garden has on display now. Their lightscape exhibit includes music, several different creative light displays. KSAT was able to tour the gardens last night, and we're hearing some rave reviews. The exhibit set to open tomorrow to the public. Tickets are on sale online right now. If you'd like to learn more, we have more on this story on, yeah, KSAT.com. You figured it out. It's happening just in time for the holidays. San Antonio's Tamale Festival gearing up to start soon. Robert Reyes started the festival after a similar event stopped out at the Pearl years ago. We have this story as well as dates for the event on KSAT.com. Glad you're with us. Coming up the next hour of GMSA, we'll tell you you can get your hands on some free reusable holiday cups from Starbucks if you missed that story earlier. And we have new details on an overnight shooting on the east side. At least one man sent to the hospital, Katrina Weber, is staying on top of this story. She will join us live with the latest. Alarm clocks didn't have a chance this morning. Gunshots are what woke people up in this east side neighborhood. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll tell you more about it. It's a murder that's gone without justice for years and police need your help in locating that suspect involved. What we know about this Crime Stoppers case coming up next. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. It's fall, y'all. It finally feels like November again and we are very excited about that. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. As we like to say around here, it's time to rise and shine. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, November 18th. Thanks for joining us this morning. It was nice to dust off my jacket as I left <laughs> this morning. Very it's nice. It's breezy mm -hmm. and chillier out there for sure. That all fits with the forecast, and Mike is here with more. Yep, and it's going to stay breezy and chilly uh, pretty much all day long. What's interesting is, you know, it's so much different than the past couple of days, obviously, but we're still almost 10 above normal. Oh, wow. Normal lows, yeah, actually 49 degrees. Uh, just wait, though, because that's coming tomorrow morning. But uh, this morning, yeah, the front moved through right on schedule late, late last night, early this morning. Morning. And uh, temperatures, we've dropped down another notch here. 52 now, Bernie stage, uh, 62 still at Stinson. And this cooler air is going to continue to slowly filter in. So I still think we dropped down a few more degrees this morning. Wind out of north at 22 miles per hour, 18 at Honda. And we have gusts now up to 35 at the airport, 30 Balverde, Stinson, 26 in Honda. So it's going to stay. It is windy. Both hands on the steering wheel. Hang on to your hat. You might have to go find your garbage cans down the down the street or something like that. The front also touched off a couple of showers, and as you can see, we have a few more uh, kind of a line of broken line of some showers. Even a few lightning strikes are being detected well down to the south. That's going to sort of stay down to the south. But even a few leftover little sprinkles um, here and there, sort of overrunning that front. Saw a couple of wet spots on the road this morning, and that was about the extent of it. So uh, any rain is. Pretty much past. Don't be surprised if there is a little sprinkle here and there. Mold is moderate. Ragweed, pigweed are both on the low side. Like I said, I think temperatures dropped down a few more degrees this morning. Then we're not going to be rebounding all that much throughout the day. We are going to make it up to uh, 59, uh, 60 at noon, and then high temperature of only 64 degrees. So that's where we rebound and wind out of the north at 15 to 25 miles per hour, gusting on top of that. A very, very breezy day. We're going to have some more clear skies tonight. Not as much wind. Cooler air continues to filter in here. So, yeah, it's going to be downright cold tomorrow morning. Will it last in through the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on? You know, flashing lights uh, don't seem to, doesn't seem like it's a good start for the 6 a.m. hour here, Mike. I-10 East at Loop 410. Look at what we have working here from this shot at Transguy. There is an overturned vehicle out there, several first responders out there on the scene working to clear this mess up, but we're also seeing a buildup of traffic a little bit further back on I-10. Now, this is not the only crash we've spotted so far, but we're going to go ahead and show you what this is looking like right now on the map because it's not looking too good. I-10 eastbound at Loop 410 is where that crash came in and you can see that buildup of orange in those eastbound lanes. Watch out for those first responders. They are working to clear the scene and make the road safer out there. So let's give them a break. Let's jump over here though to 410 because we do have that crash we showed you a little bit earlier. That's also causing some issues off Loop 410 southbound. Uh, we finally pinpointed that crash in Medina Base Road. You can see the buildup right there happening in those southbound lanes. That, we had a lot of green on the screen 
Katrina as we started the newscast, but now that we're getting into the 6 a.m. hour, so some of those problems are popping up. Let's go ahead and take a look at these inbound times, though, because this may be their silver lining of the morning. If you're traveling into San Antonio for in the next few minutes, it's green across the board. Now that crash on I-10 doesn't look like it's impacting the westbound lanes. If you're traveling in from Seguin uh, with 28 minutes at this hour, everything else is looking pretty good, but we're going to continue to watch this crash closely. Again, this is a shot from Trans Guide I-10 East at Loop 410 camera a little bit shaky, but we'll see how that impacts that morning drive. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say they have very few clues about an overnight shooting in an east side neighborhood. It said a man at the hospital left some neighbors stunned at how close they came to the trouble. Katrina Weber is live where it happened in the 100 block of West Drexel near Hackberry. And Katrina, you mentioned earlier that a home and car were hit. Are the neighbors okay? Yeah, the neighbors are fine. Police say no one else was hurt. Just the man who was shot right here in the middle of uh, the 100 block of West Drexel. Now, this happened about 3.30 this morning. Let me give you a look at the video because police have wrapped up their investigation here at the scene. But earlier they were out here in numbers. Now, they got the call from a neighbor, got here and found that man who had been shot and wounded. He was taken to a hospital. Police told us he was stable as he left in an ambulance. Meanwhile, they stayed here for the next few hours uh, investigating, collecting shell casings from the middle of the street, also trying to talk to anyone who may have seen what happened. Now, the best police uh, were able to find out is that the shooter was in a car, did drive away from the scene, but they were not able to offer me much of a description of that person or the vehicle involved. And they're not exactly sure what led to the shooting this morning, only that a man was shot and wounded, again, taken to the hospital, stable when he left here. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, Crime Stoppers and San Antonio police are hoping you can help find the suspect behind an assault that left one man dead more than a decade ago. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with more details on this Crime Stoppers case. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. Police are searching for that suspect in connection to the murder of a man that police have identified as Freeman, Jeff Freeman. Now, this is what we know. Freeman was murdered on the 900 block of Fredericksburg Road. That's north of downtown near I-10 on October 21st, 2011, in broad daylight, shortly after 11 a.m. that morning. Now, police say they arrived to EMS treating Freeman, who appeared to be a victim of assault and was quickly taken to an area hospital. Freeman later died from what police say were blunt force injuries, and his death was ruled a homicide. Now, they're asking anyone that has any information that can lead to an arrest to contact Crime Stoppers by calling 210-224-STOP. Any information you provide could make you eligible for a $5,000 cash reward. Reporting, Jonathan Corton, KSAT 12 News. A woman is dead this morning after being hit by a car while crossing a west side street. It happened at Enrique M. Barrera Parkway around southwest 34th Street around 7 o'clock last night. That's where police say a woman was walking across the parkway when she was hit by a person driving a car. Crews tried to perform CPR on the scene, but were not successful in saving her. She died there at the scene. The driver of the car that hit her did stop to help and is not expected to face charges. More than 10,000 workers at John Deere will soon be back on the job after a majority of union members voted to accept the company's final offer. The vote will end a five week long strike. The United Auto Workers says that 61% of its members at Deer voted in favor of an offer similar to one rejected earlier this month. This offer includes an immediate 10% raise and $8,500 signing bonus. John Deere will also restore a cost of living adjustment to help protect workers from an increase in consumer prices. To the coronavirus, new studies suggest about 30% of healthcare workers in the U.S. hospitals remain unvaccinated against COVID as of mid-September. The CDC and Johns Hopkins University looked about 3.4 million healthcare workers in more than 2,000 hospitals. Researchers say the percentage of vaccinated workers should increase because of the federal requirement that certain healthcare workers be fully vaccinated by January 4th. The FDA could authorize booster shots for people 18 years and older as early as today. A dozen states are already moving ahead with expanding access to booster shots without waiting for federal approval. And with Thanksgiving around the corner, health officials say it's crucial for eligible adults to get their boosters and for parents to get their kids immunized. Although the highest risk are those people who are unvaccinated, 
we are seeing an increase in emergency department visits among adults age 65 and older, which are now again higher than they are for younger age groups. If the approval timeline goes as expected, all adults might be able to start getting their booster shots as early as this weekend. Trending now on KSAT.com. Today, the jury in the Rittenhouse trial will move into day three of deliberations. This comes even as the request to rewatch a video in the case sparked calls from his attorneys for a mistrial. The defense team says it received a bad copy of a potentially critical video from prosecutors. This is the second mistrial motion from the defense in a week. Look for the latest on this story coming up on GMA beginning at 7. North America's leaders are reviving a three-way summit today. President Joe Biden, the Canadian Prime Minister, and the Mexican President will resume the tradition as they face deep differences on migration, climate, and trade. The meetings at the White House will be the first trilateral get-together for North American leaders since 2016. The gatherings took a hiatus under President Donald Trump. You can read more about this on our website at ksat.com. And time now, it's about 6.09 and 58 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, when you get pulled over by police on the road, it usually means you're about to be slapped with a ticket. But Castle Hills police are handing out something else. We'll have the details. And just ahead, we'll tell you about why you probably notice higher prices when you stop at a gas station, when those prices might come down. Steph? Thanks, Mark. Taking a look outside with live can for those of fans there of the cooler weather, it has arrived. We're at 58 degrees and things will get colder. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's about 613. New questions this morning about what can be done about rising gas prices. The White House now wants to know if the big oil companies are taking advantage of drivers. ABC's M. Wynn has more. With gas prices at a seven year high, President Biden is calling on the Federal Trade Commission to investigate if illegal conduct is to blame. Right now, it's just it's really difficult. Biden writing in a letter to the FTC, quote, in the last month, the price of unfinished gasoline is down more than five percent, while gas prices at the pump are up three percent in the same time. Biden noting that Exxon and Chevron were on track to nearly double their net income compared to 2019 and saying, quote, I do not accept hardworking Americans paying more for gas because of anti-competitive or otherwise potentially illegal conduct. The industry pushing back, calling Biden's move a distraction and saying post-pandemic demand for gas is simply outpacing supply. The average price nationwide this morning is $3.41 a gallon. That's up $1.29 from last year. In recent weeks, the White House has been pushed on how it plans to address soaring fuel costs. We're looking at every tool in our arsenal. Republicans have slammed the administration's green initiatives, claiming the White House is waging war on American energy. The president Wednesday toured an electric vehicle factory in Detroit, touting his recently signed infrastructure bill. We're going to kickstart new batteries, materials, and parts production and recycling, boosting the manufacturing of clean vehicles with new loans and new tax credits, creating new purchase incentives for consumers to buy American-made, union-made clean vehicles. Still, the administration is taking some heat from environmentalists after opening more of the Gulf of Mexico to oil and gas drilling. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, most drivers probably don't enjoy getting pulled over by police because it typically means a speeding ticket is coming. <laughs> That's right. But the Castle Hills Police Department is flipping the script in honor of the Thanksgiving holiday. They are surprising safe drivers with turkeys instead of tickets. You got to watch the expression on some of these drivers' faces. <laughs> drivers following the law using turn signals obeying posted speeds were given the Thanksgiving birds. Castle Hills Mayor J.R. Trevino came up with the idea and partnered with a local business to purchase the 20 turkeys. It was all in the spirit of spreading joy this holiday. This time of the year, everybody has something going on. We're reco recovering from COVID, the weather, weather storm, and this is an opportunity for us to do something for the community. And this was the first year for the turkey instead of ticket handout, but the mayor and the police department called it a gobbling success. N knock on wood. Next time I get pulled over, I'm going to ask for a turkey. <laughs> 
Uh, tell me. Swords, you won't get it. Tell me how that one goes. See what happens. What do you think, Stephen? Uh, as long as you're driving through Castle Hills, right? Right. And you're oh. the laws. You you have a point. <laughs> I don't think it works that way. Well, you know, I, I think that that people of driving through Castle Hills follow the rules of the road, right? That's all you got to do, well, and and make sure that you're following the rules of the road out here off I-10 East at Loop 410. We have first responders that are still out there working to clear up this mess. We talked about it a little bit earlier in the newscast. You can see we're seeing a little bit of progress because it does look like some towing trucks are out there. Uh, but looking at some of the images, I've been watching this on our Transguide cameras. It does look like a vehicle overturned in that area. Uh, we're seeing a big buildup back there on I-10. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and see if we're seeing any improvements just yet. Doesn't look like it. I-10 eastbound at Loop 410 heading into maybe towards Seguin. You're going to want to find maybe find an alternative route this morning because we do see a stretch of red. If you are or if you, if you do need to travel through this way, make sure you pack that patience this morning. Let's go ahead and take you to that other crash that is working here off Loop 410 southbound at Medina Base Road. Still seeing the same issues there. We're seeing that build up in those southbound lanes, so make sure that you are giving yourself plenty of time to get to where you need to be, uh, of course, on time, but more importantly, safely. Taking a wider look at the map, we're not seeing a lot of congestion in Loop 410 or 1604, just those two problem spots, but of course, we're going to continue to watch that throughout the morning. Looks like we have our inbound times in here. Uh, not looking like we're seeing any delays at this hour, but one last look here at this shot at Transgate I-10 East at Loop 410. Make sure you give those first responders plenty of room, guys. Yeah, it looks like somebody with big elbows bumped into that camera. We'll I talk about the know. front in one second, but folks, uh, take a look at this video last night over at the San Antonio Botanical Garden. Lightscape, and they had a preview of it. Steph was there as well with her daughter, and wow. they if you do anything this year, it is that those are all the blue bonnets out there. Really beautiful. Very cool. Yeah, it, you know, and it was great because I was saying, you know, we've been out there with the kids when they were years and years ago, but they were walking through paths in the botanical garden. I don't think I've ever been through before. It was just so nicely done. Um, they had some music playing at times there. Yes. And yeah, when, I mean, I wish it would have been 20 degrees cooler. Last right, exactly. Night, I was just going to say, even though it was a mild night mm -hmm. last night, I, I found myself uh, in the holiday spirit just because of <laughs> oh, the yeah. music, the lights. That uh, really puts you in the Christmas mood. Right there, kind of that uh, amphitheater-y sort of looking area right at the beginning, and they were playing Silent Night down in there. Oh, that and was it, my favorite It was part. almost like being in a, yeah, in a cathedral. It didn't hurt that the moon was you know almost full last night. They have s'mores areas where you can uh, get the little s'mores pack yeah, and cook them over. Yeah, hot chocolate, of yeah, course. Yeah, hot chocolate and stuff. It was, again, if you give anything <laughs> this year, head on out there at the uh, Botanical Gardens. It takes only, I mean, what, it was an hour, hour and 15 minutes to walk through it. And we took our time. Yeah, yeah it was about an hour. Yeah, it was it was just really, really nice. So, all right, uh, temperatures. It has been cooling off since the front moved on through, and I think we continue to drop down a few more degrees before it's all said and done. Mid 50s this morning, very, very breezy all day long, and only mid 60s later on today. Big change from the past couple of days. Cameras, uh, this one's not shaking right now, but boy, they have been getting a workout. By the way, the uh, lunar eclipse, once again, is tomorrow morning, and it starts about 1 in the morning or just after one o'clock in the morning and it's going to be peaking right around three tomorrow morning and then by this time it's pretty much going to be uh, over just before five o'clock. Now the big question is are we going to have clear enough skies? It's looking like it's going to be in our favor for it but there's probably still going to be a few clouds left over tomorrow. First of all the front moved on through, did squeeze out a couple of showers. There have been a few leftover little uh, spits and drizzles here and there, a couple of sprinkles, but most of the rain is well down to the south as that front continues down there, and still even a few uh, lightning strikes have been detected. Uh, but right now, what we're just going to be dealing with is the windy conditions. Wind out of the north at 22 miles per hour, gusting to 35. It's going to stay very, very windy all day long. Uh, wind chill temperatures, now it doesn't really come into play when you're above 50, but 43. The temperature is 48 in Rock Springs. Feels like 43 with that wind out there. Now by tomorrow morning, once the we have mostly clear skies, light wind and colder air continues to move on in here. That's about what our temperature is going to be here in town is 43 degrees. So it's going to be really, really cold tomorrow morning. 60 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. So as the cold air continues to filter on in here, temperatures aren't going to be rebounding all that much throughout the day. We'll just make it up to about 64. Like I said, big change, almost 20 below yesterday's high temperature and still about uh, six, seven degrees below normal. Then again, tomorrow morning, 42 and we make it up to 66. Good looking day tomorrow. 
49 starting off Saturday morning. Humidity is going to come back in here pretty quickly. So very fall like today, tomorrow, starting Saturday. Then it's going to be much milder, a little bit leaning toward the humid side. But another front moves through here very quickly late Sunday. And that'll clear us out somewhat, some cooler air. And then by the latter part of next week, it looks like some rain chances Thursday, maybe Friday too. Kind of a roller coaster yeah, ride. Definitely, yeah. Fronts one right after another. So. These, ca these cameras shaking are making us seasick in a way. <laughs> Car sick, seasick, yeah. what have you. Uh, 622 right now, about 58 degrees. So baseball season is over, but the Astros are making headlines. One of their star players will be returning for another season. Those details are just ahead. With clean, fresh ingredients, Panera's new chicken sausage and pepperoni flatbread is a mouth-watering explosion of yes. Craft, yes. Hardiness, yes. Living life to the flavor fullest, heck yes. Panera, live your yes. Now $1 delivery. One roll of a lifetime, one sore throat. But she had enough. She took new Mucinex Insta-Soothe sore throat lozenges. Show your sore throat who's boss. New Mucinex Insta-Soothe works in seconds, lasts for hours. Does your plug-in fade too fast? Try Febreze Fade Defy Plug. It has built-in technology to digitally control how much scent is released to smell first day fresh for 50 days. La, 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 la. Down there, care with Cottonelle. Down there, because you're all over your overall wellness. So hashtag treat yourself with the cleaning ripples of Cottonelle toilet paper and flushable wipes. The refreshingly clean routine that leaves you feeling ah, inside and out care. Down there, care with Cottonelle. <laughs> And Starbucks is giving away a free limited edition reusable red cup today to customers who order a holiday or fall drink. So those drinks include the peppermint mocha, toasted white chocolate mocha, caramel brulee latte, chestnut pra uh, praline latte, and iced sugar cookie almond milk latte. So a lot of options there. This is the second <laughs> treat this month for fans of Starbucks holiday products. The annual red cups and holiday drinks were released earlier this month. And today's giveaway is while supplies last. They're going to go quick. Hey, morning sports, big news. Stroh's fans, Justin Verlander is coming back in a one year deal worth twenty five million dollars. Contract also includes a conditional player option for a second season. Verlander played just one game in the past two seasons after he injured his elbow in the 2020 season opener. Nice deal. Time now, 626 and 57 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, have you bought your Thanksgiving turkey yet? We'll tell you why you should expect to pay a little more this year. And Katrina Weber will join us live with the latest on an overnight shooting on the city's east side. At least one person take it to the hospital. And Steve has been tracking at least one accident out there on the roads via Transguide. More to come. Gunshots here in this east side neighborhood send a man to the hospital and some neighbors running for cover. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. San Antonio police have made an arrest in connection to a string of burglaries. What they want you to know coming up next. It's breezy and cooler. Our crews out in the field have been adding layers as we've gone on through the morning show as we are waiting for the sun to come up on your early Thursday morning. Good morning, everybody. It is November 18th. Thanks for joining us today. Happy Friday, Junior, and I'm enjoying the weather change already. And we are one week away from Thanksgiving. Mike is here. I, I, yeah, yeah, that's hard to, to swallow there, so no pun intended. So you call it Friday, <laughs> Junior? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's oh, almost okay. Friday. Almost Friday. So, hey, front moved through last night, and wow, this is nice. Very nice. It is windy out there this morning. Uh, as you can see, we do still have some clouds. They're going to try and break up uh, somewhat by later on this afternoon. Temperatures and the wind are what really going to notice when you step outside. We're at 58 degrees now. We're still actually nine above normal, but a whole different story than what we've had the past couple of days. And that number, the dew point, the amount of moisture in the atmosphere has really, really dropped down in the past uh, about, say, six, seven hours since the front moved on through here. And the wind, that's the sustained wind at 22 miles per hour. 
hour out of the north and we've got some pretty good gusts on top of that 18 at Hondo 14 Kerrville and the wind gust 35 here in town 30 at Stinson and this is going to be the situation all day long and with those northerly winds that's going to continue to pull in the cooler temperatures we've got some mid to lower 50s in portions of the hill country of course the front did touch off a couple of sprinkly showers I feel it saw a few little uh, leftover wet spots on the road this morning. Most of those have probably dried up. We still got some rain down to the south and maybe there have been still a few little uh, sprinkles trying to overrun that front, but uh, that's about the extent of it. If you get a little sprinkle on your windshield, don't be surprised by that, but it's not going to amount to anything. Mold is on the moderate side. Pigweed, ragweed are low and uh, yeah, very breezy. Grab a jacket this morning and you're pretty much going to need it all day long. We'll only make it to the mid 60s later on today and with those winds it will feel chillier than that. And then tonight will start to clear out somewhat. Won't have the wind to deal with with the colder air in place. It's going to be very cold. As a matter of fact, we're going to be rivaling some of the coldest temperatures so far this season that we've seen, and it's going to be an absolutely gorgeous day. We'll start off chilly Saturday, but the humidity is going to return pretty quickly over the weekend and by Sunday, upper 70s, more humid, but another front's going to move through here and that'll cool us off Then another front in behind that. So it's definitely a roller coaster action coming up here this weekend and going into Thanksgiving week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, a lot of light shows out yeah, there. Yeah, not the kind of lights that we like, Mike. Uh, I-10 East at Loop 410. We see these flashing lights, and you know what that means. We have first responders, takes out hero trucks and wreckers out there on the scene. This is a view from I-10 East at Loop 410, where we do have a crash that happened. Now, we are seeing traffic moving here on the Axis Road, but a little bit further back, we're seeing more of a stretch of lights out there, so it does look like a portion here is closed off as we have some folks out there on the roadways working going to clear this up. This is a rollover that happened a little bit earlier this morning. Let's take you right to the map and see how that's impacting the lanes. It is not looking good this morning. I 10 eastbound at 410. We're seeing a stretch of red on the screen and it's not the only problem we spotted really quick here. We want to take you around town and show you what's happening. We do have this stalled vehicle off I 37 southbound at I 10. It's not causing any issues, but something that continues to cause issues is this crash here off loop 410 southbound at Medina base road. I checked the trans guide camera out there a little bit earlier. I thought that crash had cleared out, but it looks like it is still an issue out there. So it is shaping up to be a busy morning as we're getting Thursday started. Looks like our map is also picking up a few more crashes out there. Just not looking good. If you are traveling out of San Antonio, perhaps going on I 10 where that crash is located. Thankfully, we're not seeing a big delay at this hour. 36 minutes coming in, going into Seguin from the San Antonio area. But let's take one last look at this shot at Trans Guide where we're going to continue to watch this throughout the morning. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. A man walking down an Eastside street overnight has left the area in an ambulance. San Antonio police say someone shot him. It happened in the 100 block of West Drexel near Hackberry. Katrina Weber is there with a live report in Katrina. Have police released any information about that shooter? Well, it seems like they don't have a whole lot of information at this point. All they were able to tell me is that that person who fired the shots left here in a car. The neighbors called police here around 3.30 this morning. They found shell casings in the middle of the street in the 100 block of West Drexel. Police also found a man suffering from a gunshot wound. The officers told me he was stable as he left for a hospital in an ambulance. At least one home and car also were hit by bullets, but no one else was hurt. I did speak to a man who told me his mother was nearly hit by gunfire. He said she was shaken up, but also is okay. Now, uh, police, again, did tell me that the, there was a car involved, that the shooter left in a car, but they were not able to offer a description of that vehicle. So it sounds like right now they don't have a whole lot of information. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New details this morning from a man one in connection with a string of burglaries. San Antonio police arrested 29 year old Julian Vada yesterday. The rash of burglaries reported between September and November, but police say Vada may be responsible for a number of other cases. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with all the details. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Stephanie. That's right. They believe that suspect who is now in custody may be responsible for a number of other robberies. They, they want to take this time to remind the public, anyone that may have or believe they are a victim, to go ahead and call in and make those reports, Stephanie. But this is what we know so far. 29-year-old Julian Vara is being charged now with three counts of burglary of a habitation and one count of burglary of a building. They say Vara stole everything from money, electronics, lawn equipment, jewelry, and say they are still working 
on recovering any of those stolen items and trying to return those items to their owners. Now, those burglaries were reported on properties located on South Trinity Street, Pendleton Avenue, and South Homes, and those homes are in neighborhoods not far from downtown. Now, police also tell us Vada has other pending charges from previous incidents, including burglary of a building and evading arrest. Now, Mark Stephanie, as the holidays are just right around the corner, police say this arrest is a good reminder to folks to make sure to secure their personal property. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. New this morning, we have learned the name of a man killed during a crash on the northwest side. It's a story we first heard you about yesterday on GMSA. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying him as 43-year-old Jonathan Daltrey. The crash happened early yesterday morning on Hebner Road and Research Drive west of Interstate 10. According to police, Daltrey crossed in an area that didn't have a crosswalk. A driver in a silver sedan that was traveling on Hebner says he did not see Daltrey and hit him. The driver pulled over to help, but he died at the scene. Police say no criminal charges are pending. A scary scene on the east side last night. A via bus caught in the crossfire of a shooting. It happened around 8 p.m. on MLK near Stolnitz Street. San Antonio police say people in two cars were shooting at each other when at least two bullets hit the bus. Two people were inside at the time, one passenger and the driver. Officers believe the passenger was hit by shrapnel. No one else was hurt. One of the shooters was detained. Officers are still looking for the second suspect. This morning, we are keeping an eye on the border, specifically the section in Eagle Pass. That's where the Texas National Guard and DPS troopers used shipping containers to cover gaps along the border. Take a look at this video. This is from Governor Greg Abbott. We're monitoring here because Eagle Pass is just an hour south of, El of Del Rio. You may recall back in September, that's where thousands of Haitians tried to come to the U.S. while seeking asylum. And today we'll have team coverage along the border. We're going to have crews in Eagle Pass and Laredo. We'll show you how businesses there and here in San Antonio are affected by the bridges finally opening up to non-essential travel. Look for these stories in our later newscast. The coronavirus is starting to get ugly in Germany. The country's head of disease control has warned the country faces a quote unquote really terrible Christmas unless steps are taken to counter the sharp rise in coronavirus infections. The agency says more than 65,000 new cases were reported in a single day. German lawmakers are currently debating measures that would replace the nationwide epidemic rules, which are set to expire at the end of the month. Here in the U.S., dozens of cases pushing back against one of the federal government's vaccine mandates are now in the hands of one court. CNN's Brett Conway has everything you need to know. The COVID-19 vaccination push continues, and there was a 47% boost in first vaccinations over last week, more than double what it was a month ago, partly because younger kids are now eligible. And boosters have gotten their own boost. More than 31 million fully vaccinated adults have gotten a booster. That's about one in six. More than half of them are people 65 and up. But Wednesday, Moderna said it filed for emergency use authorization with the FDA for its booster for all adults. And Pfizer has submitted for EUA for its booster, too. The FDA could make a decision on Pfizer's authorization any day, while the CDC's advisors are set to meet Friday to talk about it. But some states don't want to wait. At least 11 states expanded booster eligibility ahead of the federal green light. Some of the same states pushing back against the federal government's vaccine mandate aimed at companies with more than 100 employees. 34 challenges were filed nationwide, some against, others looking for a more stringent mandate. They'll be consolidated and, after a lottery, decided by the conservative-leaning Ohio-based 6th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals. The fate of President Joe Biden's most controversial push to date to get Americans vaccinated, now out of his hands. I'm Britt Conway reporting. And something a lot of people will not be thankful for this Thanksgiving, the cost of dinner. The average price of turkey is expected to be about 24% higher than last year. That's according to the Farm Bureau's annual survey. The current supply chain delays are being blamed for those higher prices. Time check, 640, about 57 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, are you trying to give up cigarettes after smoking for years? We're going to tell you if quitting the habit will really make a difference.
Welcome back. It's 644. Today is November 18th, which is also known as the Great American Smokeout. The day thousands of people will try to give up cigarettes for good. 70% of those who smoke want to stop, and each year about 1.3 million people do kick the habit. What if you've been smoking for 10, 20, even 30 years? Does quitting even make a difference to the damage that's already been done? RJ Marquez has the answer. How can you quit this? The nicotine mints and the gum, maybe. Cold turkey. No problem. I have it. <laughs> According to smokefree.gov, smoking impacts every organ in your body, and it's never too late to reverse the damage that's been done. Here's what quit.com says you can expect. After six hours of quitting, your heart rate slows and your blood pressure becomes more stable. After one day, your body is almost nicotine free, but it takes two weeks to rewire your brain to not crave nicotine. Within 24 hours, your risk of heart attack decreases as your blood becomes thinner and less likely to clot. After three to six months, your lungs will start to function better. In two to five years, your risk of heart disease will lessen, and in 10 to 15 years, the risk of lung cancer, heart attack, or stroke will be similar to someone who has never smoked. 40% of people have been successful quitting attributed to a strong cessation program. The first steps include replacing nicotine with patches or gum. Also, little things can cause you to want to smoke, so get up and move around to curb initial cravings. And avoid triggers by changing your routine. If you or someone you know needs help quitting, call the helpline at 1-800-QUIT-NOW. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. It's now 646. And I know our trans guide cameras are a little shaky, but let's go ahead and check the roadways with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, yeah, traffic's not been great this morning, Mark and Stephanie. We can see I-10 East at Loop 410. We show, showed you some flashing lights out there a little bit earlier. That's because a crash was detected in that area. Looks like we have a wire that's also dangling there on that trans guide camera. But we're seeing traffic moving on the access road pretty, pretty slowly, but it does look like that portion of 410 has opened up. So some good news there. Let's take you right to the map because we still do see that big stretch of red off I-10 eastbound at Loop 410 where traffic has been building, but it looks like that crash may have just cleared. Let's do some hop in here because we do still have the stall off I-37 southbound at I-10. Taking you over here though to 410, we do have a new situation that popped up. Earlier we told you about a crash off 410 at Medina Base. It looks like that crash now may be at New Valley High Drive within that same vicinity, but we're seeing that build up in the southbound lanes of 410, so give yourself plenty of time this morning. We also have another crash that popped up here off Loop 410 northbound at Ingram Road. It has been a pretty busy morning, and of course, we're keeping a track of it all here in the traffic lab. We still have some situations happening off 35, working with our friends at TransGuy to find out what's going on. Really want to show you that crash that we're watching there off 410, where traffic has been building in that area. Not looking too good, and Mike, the camera's pretty shaky out there as well. Yeah, winds have been gusting uh, around 30 miles per hour in many locations. Love this picture over there around Lost Maples. Yeah, the leaves have been falling, but uh, wow, it's still beautiful. And I can imagine as relaxing as the picture is, the walk is relaxing out there as well. Thank you very much for that. So we got a lot of clouds hanging around here. The sun was trying to squeak through a little bit earlier. We'll see more. Not a heck of a lot, but more later on today. And this camera's quivering as well, thanks to those winds. As the front moved on through, we've had um, a couple of showers that were squeezed out. As you can see, there is one little cell that's trying to pop up over there in Edwards County. Maybe a lightning strike, kind of some uh, some overrunning, if you will. And then a lot more rain well down to the south. We had a few little sprinkly showers that still moved on through here. And uh, that's pretty much about it. All that will the most part remain down there to the south and even a few more uh, lightning strikes well down there to the south. But again, as that front continues to push on down there, that will push out through the area. Uh, 22 miles per hour winds here in town, 20 down at Stinson. Again, 35 mile per hour wind gusts out at the airport. And that's uh, not really going to be the exception today. We're going to have very, very blustery conditions. Temperatures yesterday, 82, about 10 above normal. Today we're going to be anywhere from 8 to 10 degrees below normal, so almost 20 degree difference between uh, yesterday and today. And a lot of folks, even in the Hill Country, won't get out of the 50s as this cooler air continues to filter on in here. So we've had this front. You can see this big trough up there uh, up around the southern Canada, Prairie Provinces, Great Lakes area. That's what pulled that front on through here. It's not going to last all that long. This latest taste of fall weather will start off very cold tomorrow morning. 
chilly on Saturday morning, but the humidity is going to come back in here fairly quickly. We get into more of a uh, kind of a tranquil pattern throughout much of the weekend. Then another front, as you can see, another big low up there to the north is going to come through here late Sunday. So that'll get rid of any of the humidity for the first part of next week. Then we got to watch that low out there to the west. And even though it sort of fizzles off as far as this graphic is concerned, we're still going to have a big trough developing out there to the west of us, and that's going to move on in. Give us a chance of rain Wednesday, and it looks like going into Thursday and maybe even Friday of next week with slightly cooler temperatures as well. So as of right now, and this has been the trend the past couple of days looking ahead toward Thanksgiving, that it does appear like it uh, right now is going to be on the, the wetter side. 60 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies, high temperature only up to 64. So yep, it's going to be chilly and also very windy all day long. Then we're going to have mostly clear skies tonight and lighter winds. So that's going to allow temperatures to really drop down. We'll be down to 42 tomorrow morning up to 66, 49 Saturday and more humidity over the weekend. Then the front comes through, clears things out. And again, as it looks right now, it's going to be uh, kind of wet on Thursday. And as far as the eclipse late tonight, actually early tomorrow morning between about one and four peaks at three in the morning. Mm -hmm. Eh, hopefully the clouds clear on out. We will have a lot of clear skies, but still a few clouds hanging around here. You don't sound very optimistic. Um, I mean, it'd be nice if it was completely clear. You know, it'd be a... Like last yeah. night. Yeah, like last night. But um, there will be some clouds hanging around there, though. But I think it's going to... I think things are working in our favor. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mike. 650, about 57 degrees. Raising Monarch Butterflies, I'm Sarah Costa. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, we'll be talking about my personal experience raising monarchs and also going to a local elementary school that's doing the same. Spurs have a road match tonight in Minnesota against the Timberwolves. Silver and Black are 4-10 and 10 on the year. They've dropped their last three games. Spurs, T-Wolves, 7 o'clock tonight. And happening just a couple of hours, Spurs Sports and Entertainment will break ground on their new nearly 50-acre development on the far northwest side. The so-called Human Performance Campus will be located off 1604 at I-10 near the shops at La Cantera and Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. It will feature a state-of-the-art training facility for our Spurs, medical and research offices, retail, park, and community space. The more than 500,000 square foot campus will include a collection of world-class training facilities, cutting-edge health care, offices, community spaces, and and much, much more. And taking a look outside with a live cam. Go Spurs, go. Let's not talk about some of the losses that happened. Let's just talk about the future. We're cheering on our Spurs no matter what. And taking a look outside with live cam again. It is nice out there, nice and chilly at 57 degrees. We'll be right back. Our Share of the Shoes donation event still going on. You still have our week to help out children in need here in San Antonio. And coming up today on GMSA at 9, Tiffany Huertas is live from Good Samaritan Community Services with details on how to donate and what kind of positive impact your donations can have on the community. Let's get a check of your morning commute at 5 till 7. Still not looking good out here, Mark and Stephanie. Here we have a shot of US 90 at 410. Camera has been shaking throughout the morning. Uh, traffic has been pretty much the same for the last hour or so because of a crash that has been detected in that area. The southbound lanes of 410 right at New Valley High Driver. What's being impacted? And also, we're seeing a slowdown in the northbound lanes. Big jump up here. We do have some improvement, though, after a crash has cleared off I-10 eastbound at Loop 410, where traffic moving now pretty smoothly, Mike. Thank you, sir. And the front moved on through. Grab a jacket. Gray skies out there. 57 degrees now in town. Low 50s hill country. Very, very windy. Winds have been uh, gusting all morning long, close to 30, 35 miles per hour. We also uh, have showers and a couple of storms down to the south. And then that lone area of some rain out there in western portions of the hill country. Kind of the, uh, the anomaly, if you will. But things will continue to uh, clear out and stays cold today. Okay. Great news for us. You guys have a wonderful day. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.